don't give a friends a whorehouse deal. Mm -hmm. You know, just don't. Can you say that? Uh, it's your podcast. You can say whatever you want. Welcome to Cue the Mic. Hey guys, welcome back to Cue the Mic. Episode 18. Mm hmm. 18. It's kind of crazy. I didn't think I'd get you to sit still this long. Yeah, I know. Me neither. And, and some doing. days, like, like today, mm -hmm. like normally the only place I can find quiet is my house. Because it's just Sherry and I, and you know, we go to work and whatever. Well, today's house cleaning day, mm. and so the house cleaners come first thing in the morning. And I know if we don't get this thing recorded right away, that it's not going to happen. I mean, it was going to happen. I just was going to have to probably record from the car. So it was. It's it's kind of tough because so then I, I have to, the only other place I can find is a conference room at corporate office and white walls, nothing on the walls. So, I, I mean, I had to do a makeshift to knock down some of the sound. Greg mm -hmm. Rempe said, get out the moving blanket. So I got a folding table in front of me with a moving blanket and the lighting wasn't very good. I tried to bring it light. It blinded me for 10 minutes and it's just like, okay, this is just a shit show. And then I'm like, oh, where's, where's my AirPods? You know, I normally have my AirPods, and I'm like, they're not in my bag. So find my AirPods. Yeah, they must be laying on the ground in Mayetta, Kansas. Because that's where they show the location is, and they must have, you know, when I'm cooking in the barbecue circuit, I wear hearing aids normally, but when it gets really hot and sweaty out, they just start to crackle when they sweat. So instead, I'll just carry my AirPods with me and kind of use them to talk on the phone or whatever. So evidently, I must have sat down in a chair. They must be sitting at my camping spot. So if anybody's out there uh, in Mayetta, Kansas, go pick up my AirPods. So I, I did the find my AirPod this morning, and sure enough, Mayetta, Kansas. That is my biggest fear when it comes Why, to my they AirPods. Make, they, they make more. Do you think I can afford to just buy another pair? So I didn't even so buy I, my first pair. So I brought Sherry's, but then I used to wear these things on the plane, these JBL whatever, Bluetooth, mm -hmm. whatever. And I hate like them. But so, so I grabbed Sherry's AirPods. Um, this morning and I grabbed these. I'm like, okay, we'll just try this. I'm not sure I like this. I'm getting too much of an echo in my ear, but, um, you look like I do. Now oh we look boy. official. Except for mine. I don't make big head ones. Right. I think mine are for big heads. Are they? Mm hmm. I think I like it better with them. Not on my ear. You think? No, I don't. Yeah, but well. it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. First world problems. I guess we should talk since this is a podcast yeah. and people listen to mm -hmm. this instead of not being able to see my crazy JBL things. But yeah. anyway, nonetheless, yeah. May out of Kansas, May out of Kansas, mm -hmm. the KCBS Invitational. Yeah, how'd that go? Uh, um, not worth a crap. Mm. Not worth a crap. You know, we, we went out, we cooked on first day. Everything was pretty decent on the first day, um, except for brisket. Brisket was just flat. It just had zero flavor. And I'm not sure why, but mm -hmm. it just had zero flavor. It was just, it was not good. But yeah. it was, I'm not sure it was not 76th place out of 80 some teams or 100. I don't even know how many teams, who cares? But it was just right down in the bottom tier. And I'm like, it was texture was good. It was juicy. It just didn't have any flavor. And I tried to doctor it up as much as I could before I sent it to the judges. But it just, mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of hope. I figured I was going to get what the 30, 40th place brisket because it was still cooked very well. Mm -hmm. And it was still juicy, but it was just 
horrible. So got That's killed. Tough. I think first day we got a 15th place call in ribs. I hate to contest it and announce the top 15, but we got 15th place call in ribs. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a thing called the wild child there that you put in money. Everybody puts in money and whoever gets 16th place in the pick category mm-hmm. wins the pot. Well, this one, everybody threw in a hundred dollars. Um, and so, of course, I get 15th place. Of course, I tie for 16th place. If I just would have got 16th place, I would have won like $840. Holy sh. But instead, I got, yeah. So every category was the same way, you know? And so it's like, then so day one, whatever. Day two, miraculous mm-hmm. cook. I pull out a third place in chicken and they still hate my brisket, even though I thought it was a hundred times better and I get 40 mm. something in brisket or whatever. Yeah. I forgot to even post about it. It was just, and we ended up 15th overall in the invitational, but mm. it was just like, oh, of course, I think we tied maybe for 16th and would have won mm-hmm. <laughs> money yeah. in the wild child. But nonetheless, that's barbecue for you. You know, if they don't like it, just cook another week and off we go. Right. It's so interesting. Yeah. You just got to be able to brush it off, right? Just brush it off and move on to the next one. Think like a goldfish. Think like, is that how goldfish think? Well, goldfish have short-term memory, so. They do? Yeah, so they forget everything. Uh, It's a Ted Lasso thing. All our Ted Lasso. I don't know. Be a goldfish. Who's you don't know what Ted Lasso is? The show? No. no. With Jason Sudeikis? Wow. No. no. On Apple TV. Is it a- you should oh. watch it. I don't watch TV. Okay. I'm too busy doing podcasts. <laughs> okay. No, I don't do I I, I totally cut <laughs> off TV. I totally cut off TV about two years ago. And if you haven't ever done that. that, just just do it. I don't. I, mm. Our TV does not get turned on unless Sherry's home by herself. Or now, as we go into the NFL season, which she loves, I absolutely despise. On Sundays, she will be sitting in front of the TV, and I will be somewhere not in front of the TV because I I just can't stand watching TV. I can't stand the politics of it. I can't stand just. It's just. It's just junk. It's just drama. It's just whatever. And the sooner you disconnect from that, life is so much better. Life is so much better. And you can go, I still get the news. I can still go find my own news, Mm -hmm. right? And I can look at different, I can look at different avenues of news and and decipher stuff. But yeah, no, no TV, no TV. Just, it it, it almost irritates me now. If if the TV is on, it just it just grinds on me that I'm like, get the TV off. God, you're turning into an old man so fast. No, because uh, an old man would have the TV on all the time. Well, or right? just be grumpy about it, nonetheless. Okay, maybe I'll just be grumpy about it. But so anyway, so it it was fine. This week's been yeah. total fix it. You know the city Chaos. of Des Moines. City of Des Moines decided they wanted to change their regulations on food trucks so that we had to have fancy new propane During the season? On... Yeah. Well, evidently they said they gave us a warning last year. Well, our food truck manager changed, and he never told me that that was a warning. So we went to get it inspected, and we knew they had a few little regulations we thought we could pass, mm-hmm. but we didn't pass. So in order to operate the food truck in the city of Des Moines, which we very rarely do, we, yeah. we we always do it in the suburbs yeah. Um, because Des Moines, there's just not a lot of proper places to take the food truck. Yeah. And so we, um, I'm like, well, do I want to do this or just stay away from Des Moines and not get that permit, which is 400 bucks a year, I think. Well, we have Oktoberfest. Well, maybe, you know, we got to get, we got to get that locked in, but, but. Oh, I thought it was. No, no, it's not locked no. in. I thought of that last night. But anyway. So we did the, uh, I'm like, you know what? I might as well bring it up because if Des Moines has this code, then the city of Ankeny will have it next year in Johnston. Mm -hmm. So I might as well just get it done. Well, I couldn't find anybody to do it. I mean, they're like, yeah, we can get it done in a couple months. I'm like, really? I'll just do it myself. So I off to set propane plumbing job. I got all the fittings and I'm like, okay, this is going to take about 
two hours, but I'm going to say it's going to take six. And it should only take one trip to the store, but it's going to take four. Well, after two days, 10 hours, four trips to the hardware store, two trips to the propane company, and three call, calls to my plumber friend, it is complete. The job is complete. God. Yeah. And so while I was in the fix-it mode, then I get home last night, and I'm like, okay, my generator needs fixed. So mm -hmm. I tore apart the fuel filter on the generator and got it all put back together. And I'm like, I was finally about seven o'clock. I'm like, okay, I'm done. Then I walked in and Sherry's been hinting on about the plumbing in the back prep sink is the faucets are coming loose a little bit. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm already in fix it mode. I might as well clear out everything underneath the sink that we didn't even know was there, you know, just like <laughs> under yeah. any kitchen sink. Any sink, it, yeah. Take all that out. I get underneath there and surprise of the day, it has this little socket on there that's already built in. So all I had to mm -hmm. do was tighten the socket. Well, Sherry's out riding the bike. So I'm stuck underneath the sink. I'm not a small guy. No. I'm st stuck underneath the sink. And I, I was able to get to my phone and call Sherry and say, hey, uh, you're going to have to hold the top of this so that I can come uh, get it all tightened up. So she came in, got it all tightened up, put back together. I'm out of maintenance mode. No more, no more maintenance duties this week. I don't care what breaks. I'm not fixing it. I respect that. Yeah. My stuff all got fixed too last week, actually. It did? Mm-hmm. What did they find out was the core problem to your shitty problem? I just needed a clean out, I guess. And then all my problems were solved. It needed a clean out. That was it. Yeah. They just put a clean out in, which they said that's what they were going to do. And then after they put in the clean out was when they were going to make sure the clog cleared up and then find out if I had Orangeburg, if the clog was still there. But I guess it did the job. So I don't know. I think, I think they were playing a young girl mm -hmm. for her money. Probably. But. Oh. Well, that's good. At least now you yeah, can. it's done. Now, now you can go to the bathroom and shower at the same time. Yep. Right. I ran. Guess I tested are, it first. Are, guess you did. You sat on yeah. the toilet. No, no, no. And, I tested oh. the. I used my dishwasher and my washing machine. <laughs> I just made sure it could handle a lot of stuff. Okay, so now Emma is uh, available for guest. Yeah, I was guest having them anyway. Stay. I'll give you her address if anybody wants to go visit. Go no, thank visit you. Her. She has running. <laughs> I do. I do. Good. Yeah. Spent a little time also, you know, Sherry, I, she wanted mm -hmm. to go to the state fair and I think she just wanted to go eat this grinder ball, but I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, being the loving husband that I am, I said, <laughs> I'd love to go to the fair. And she goes, no, you don't. And I said, no, no, let's go to the fair. I haven't been in 15 years. So it was a beautiful day. Uh, what day was that? Tuesday. It was just oh, yeah. like 78 degrees, yeah, which that was is a good unheard day. of. Yeah. And so finally, when I got out of the food truck and got home, we were able to get to the fair like at four o'clock and or three three thirty four 4 o'clock. And we were able to spend three or four hours walking around the fair. And, you know, it was, it was fun. I mean, it was, it was fun. It's, I don't want to do yeah. it every year. Um, I'll do it again in five years, maybe. Yeah. Um, That's fair. But it was, but it was all about the food. Mm, always we is. Did, we did the walk around the thing, but we started our food journey. I had never had a pork chop on the stick, which is really just a bone in pork chop at the Iowa mm -hmm. Pork Producers, but I'd never have one. And I have a lot of friends at the Pork Producers. I know mm -hmm. the product they buy, mm -hmm. and it's an amazing product that it's really almost hard to screw up. Yeah. And so I'm like, that's right when we first walked in, there it was, the pork tent. And I said, okay, we're on it. We're going to get a pork mm -hmm. chop on a stick. So we got a pork chop on a stick, and it was amazing. It was really good. I'm like, okay, we're off to a good start. And then we go down the, the midway, and Sherry wanted to try this grinder ball, which was yeah. kind of Italian sausage and bacon wrapped in a ball with, and it served with marinara. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot and, about it this year. Yeah, it was bland AF. Oh. It well, was that's not, not good. good. It just, it was just not good. So we did that. And then we walked around the varied industry building, come back out and she wanted cheese mm -hmm. curds. 
of course, me being the lactose intolerant guy going, oh, I could probably handle a few of those. So we wait in line because I'm not a wait in line guy. So we wait in line to get the cheese curds and they come out and they're just, they're dog shit horrible. They're just not good. I'm like, really? You know what? Like, how can they, how are they, they're cheese curds? Uh, just uh, no flavor. They were overdone. They oh. were just. So they're, they're like just, chewy and. They're just not gross. good. You know, just not good. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we did that. And so we're like, okay, let's walk down and the other end. So we weren't walking and I saw, we came here to eat, right? We're going to eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, we go and I see this little, kind of looks like a little place that did chicken and waffles and you could buy Mm -hmm. either a chicken and waffle on a stick or a sausage and breakfast sausage and waffle on a stick and i'm like well i'm gonna go for the chicken right Mm -hmm. own a chicken restaurant yeah so it was just this preformed chicken and it was Mm -hmm. it it just wasn't very good i mean it just not very good i'm like yeah i just want good food so we walk more and walk more and then i Went over, I wanted to see the uh, What You Smoking, who's a, another mm-hmm. barbecue restaurant in town. They were first time at the fair, and they had one of the best fair foods, the Texas Twinkie. And, and mm-hmm. I wasn't going to eat it, but I thought, I want to go over here and just see how busy they are. You know, see if they're getting anything. Because mm-hmm. they were kind of not off the midway. They were they were out by the craft beer tent, which was packed, by the way. Yeah. Um, it's always packed. And we go over, and I mean, there was a line 100 people long. And I'm like, whew, glad I don't want one of these. But I saw Chucky's tenderloins, and Ooh. Chucky's tenderloins. I've never had a Chucky's tenderloin, mm-hmm. right? But they look yep. amazing, and they do a great job. They go to all the Chicago Cubs training. They go to NASCAR races, mm-hmm. and they're out, they're out of a a restaurant that used to be called TC's in Dewitt, and they shut down the restaurant and opened up this tenderloin food truck, and they're mm-hmm. they're making food truck tenderloins to order. And I'm like, man, this is really good. But mm-hmm. there was 15 people in line, and I'm not waiting in line for anything. 15 so, people is nothing. And nothing except for me. I'm not waiting in line. Okay. So we meows, and we keep roaming on on our food adventure. And Did and you so find we, anything you liked? Oh, yeah. That's, okay. That's, you you got to save that till the end. Okay. I just right. wanted to make so sure that we, people so had then we go to down look forward and, to. And, so, we're, <laughs> so we're driving... And we or we're walking through the kind of the food area, and Sherry says, "I want to go by the big slide." And and mm-hmm. so we went there. And they normally have watermelon, and the next to it was a place that was selling the deep fried brisket mac and cheese sandwich. Okay, so so they're taking making okay. a grilled cheese with brisket yeah. and mac and cheese on the center of it, mm-hmm. and then they're battering it and deep frying it, and then they're cutting it in half. And drizzling uh, raspberry barbecue sauce on top of it. Oh, okay. I, I mean, we're talking. The pictures look good. Matter of fact, I just read this morning they were just named the top fair food uh, of this year. And Joni, our that, friends at Great, <clears throat> Great Caterers of Iowa, mm-hmm. I didn't know it was her her spot that had it. But so Joni, Joni Bell, who actually uses Smokey D's barbecue sauce and some of her recipes. But anyway, nice. Joni, um, she won the best fair food. And I mean, it looked good. Did Two you try lines. it? Two lines with like 50 people each in them. Not waiting for that. Nope. It, sorry. Nope. Not doing it. You can't hype up a food like that and then not even be able to tell us if it was good or not. <laughs> so then that we go was sit criminal. over and... But we go over and, you know, Sherry's got a bum knee and and my back was hurting a little. I said, let's just go sit in the shade at the Bill Riley talent stage. So we sat mm-hmm. there and and then we saw the deep fried strawberry shortcake. Stand. Did you try that? Was there no a line? line. No okay. line. Okay. Okay. We go over and get it. And mm-hmm. oh, my. Wow. Like best yeah. in show. Best in show. See, it was it was just truly amazing. It's just so much deep fried food. Well, that's it's a fair, right? Yeah, I know, which is kind of our thing. But it's like I could, I don't go to the fair either. I couldn't eat there this year, even if I wanted to. But that's just a lot. 
of deep uh, fried well, food. So, no, it, it goes it goes on. So so we're sitting mm-hmm. there. We eat this strawberry shortcake, deep fried, and mm-hmm. it was just crazy good. I mean, they drizzle yeah. it in strawberry sauce and, it's, and yeah. whipped cream on it if you want. It was just, it was true. Matter of yeah. fact, it was so good that Sherry's sister was going to the fair yesterday. She gave her a Ziploc bag to buy one as they were leaving to bring it back to her so she could reheat it. It was that good. No, it ain't going to be like that. shit reheated. But if you air fry it, maybe. Oh, well, yeah, maybe. She's probably already had it. I don't blame her. And then so we sat there, and she's like, well, I'm getting full. And I'm like, oh, you know, you want a grinder. So I went over and got a gizmo, and and it was it was decent. It was decent, just like it always is. Not a lot of meat on it, but mm-hmm. decent. And then um, we started walking up the hill. We were, parked, we were parked inside the fairgrounds. We had these the VIP-type parking pass. What, How did you, you pull that off? Like that for? How did you pull that well, off? Well, we donate thousands of dollars to the Fair oh. Foundation. So That'll they, like this weekend, I think we're probably buying the Grand Champion Hog or something like that or sharing it. Or I just give them money. And I used to buy the Grand Champion Pen of Chickens. <laughs> yeah. Right? And they mm-hmm. would announce. And they have this big pomp and circumstance. I'm never in town, but they, they want me to come yeah. out and go to the show ring and take pictures and all this stuff. And so last year, I know we bought the the Grand Champion Steer. Mm-hmm along with Hy-Vee and whatever. And it's just people yeah. pooling money to buy this stuff. And you really, it's just supporting agriculture and supporting the kids yeah. and stuff like that. So right. anyway, I'm not sure what we're buying this year. I'll find out after it gets bought because my phone will blow up. Hey, congratulations on buying the market hog or the reserve grand champ yeah. or whatever. I just, it's kind of fun. But anyway, they give us that tickets to the fair and they give us inside VIP parking. Well, the VIP parking is clear at the top of the hill. So it's it's steep to mm. walk down the hill. Oh, yeah. And it, and it sucks at the end of the day to walk up yeah. the hill. So yeah. we took a little break on our way up the hill. And mm-hmm. uh, of course, you got to have a corn dog. Sure yeah. goes, aren't you full? And I'm like, well, yeah, but I got to have a corn dog. Well, you want a regular one? Foot long. Oh, got to have a foot long corn dog. So I had the corn, corn, corn dog from Campbell's Concessions. It's the state fair favorite. And it was really yeah. good. But overall... Food was meh. Nah. Strawberry shortcake was good. Grind was great. Uh, grinder was okay. Corn dog was really good. Um, mm-hmm. Other than that, but you know, prices have went up. Yeah, crazy. I mean, a turkey leg at the state fair now, which mm-hmm. used to be like six bucks, is eighteen dollars. Yeah, almost every fair food item I talked about was eight dollars. Yeah, right. eight eight dollars strawberry shortcake, eight dollars uh, grinder, twelve dollars. Yeah, I for a grinder that had three ounces of meat. Yeah, it's, it's expensive. It was there. like, well, it just got me thinking about it, you know, and that's what kind of I'm like, you know, we really should talk about pricing because we always try and be mm-hmm. educational, and, yeah. and that's something that I get asked a lot. I get a lot of emails from novice right. barbecue guys and stuff saying, mm-hmm. hey. Somebody, just like we did, somebody somebody wants us to cater their wedding. What do I charge them? Mm-hmm. And so I kind of teach them a little bit about how to do food costing and how do you price yourself in the market and mm-hmm. and things like that. So anyway, yeah. I thought it would be a little interesting, hopefully not too boring, to talk about kind of my methodology behind food costing, you know, and our mm-hmm. good friend, I know Randy Twyfer wanted to do this episode because he's like, I want to talk about Darren math. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I know. So sorry, Randy, but we're going to get you on another time talking about some other subject, but it's really the only thing that at five o'clock this morning that I could really come up Think with of- saying, Hey, we need to make this interesting. We can't talk about fair food all day long. And we definitely won't True. don't want to talk about competition barbecue, but yeah, definitely I mean that, don't. Well, not not every time, and we talked oh. about it last time. We talked about the jack draw, remember? Oh yeah, that's right. So we, we want did. to reach a broader audience, Emma. Mm. You're right. Uh, no, you. Note at note at the KCBS Invitational, the highest score ever recorded. Mm-hmm. In KCBS history was this weekend. Smoked and Furious hit a seven seventeen. Oh wow! A seven twenty is perfect all across the board. Uh-oh. So, I mean, okay. they got killed on yeah. they get killed on day two, but but on day one, 
a 717. Hey. I mean, there was eight scores above That's 700. Insane. Yeah, That's we were insane. we pulled in a six ninety eight, which would win almost every single contest. Mm -hmm. I got fifteenth, so really tight score. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But, yeah, crazy. <laughs> but anyway, back to pricing. Yeah. So simple methodology, and maybe I do mm -hmm. this backwards. But how do you determine food cost? Well, or how do you mm -hmm. determine how to price something? Um, what I do very easy method is to start off with, and we can adjust up or down, but you figure out every ingredient that goes into this food dish, mm -hmm. and you add up all the costs for a portion, right? So, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, if you have 10 portions, and you, you know, if, if a, a pan of mac and cheese you make makes 15 portions, which a normal half size pan would do, then figure out what it costs to make that half pan divided by 15. Now you have your portion cost. Mm -hmm. And then I divide it by 0. 0.3. Now, what I'm shooting as a first target is 30%. Okay, so 0. 0.3 oh. is 30%. So instead of trying to figure out the number, what's 30% more, my simple math has always been divide it by whatever food cost percentage you want. So if you want it, let's say something costs $5 to make mm -hmm. and I want 30% food cost. I'm going to take $5 divided by 0.3, and that's going to give me $15, right? And so $15 would be the charge. If you want 40% food cost on an item, you know, and so you can kind of, or if you want 20%, you're going to do 20% and you charge 10 bucks to get 20%, which means if you give me $10 and it costs me $5, well, I guess 20% is more than that, but you know, if I want 50% food cost in simple terms, $10, 50% food cost is $5. If I take $5 divided by 0.5, I get you $10. That clear as mud? You're looking at me dazed. I'm not very good at math, but that do, it, that didn't make sense to me. Okay, so I need to I need to go over this again to make sense to Emma. Yeah, why? Because... why? I think I Why just have what? to see. I think I just have to. I'd have to just see it. I believe yeah. you. So write on your tablet. So and maybe. So if you say two dollars. Okay, hold on. Let me do this. Let's say something cost you two dollars. Okay. Two dollars. And you want that item to be a thirty percent food cost item. Okay. You're gonna do two dollars divided by point three. Okay. Is what? Is what? Six point six six. Six dollars oh. and sixty six cents. So Got if it. I charge six dollars and sixty six cents, and my yeah. food cost is two dollars, then I have a thirty percent food cost. Math is so weird, but that yeah, makes sense. I know. Why so it, so it doesn't matter. It, it, right, but it's it's my simple way of. Yeah. I mean, you can you sense. can do math fifteen different ways, but if you mm -hmm. divide it by the food cost, you'll figure out what that, and that'll be close. It won't be exact, but it'll be close. So, you know, yeah. it, just a typical food cost. If you're going to shoot for a food cost, if I were to pick one food cost, I'd shoot for thirty percent. Now, mm -hmm. you're also going to have different menu items that are going to have higher food cost and lower food cost, and that's when it comes to the methodology mm -hmm. of food costing. So for instance, a rack of ribs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. A rack of ribs cost us $9. Right. Okay. So if I take, if I take a rack of ribs, it's $9. Got to get out my calculator here. If I take a $9 and I charge $25 for a rack of ribs, I can say $25 divided by $9. Nope. $9 divided by $25 is 36% food cost. Okay, so that may be okay. higher. So uh, when you design your menu, not everything has to be 30% food cost, right? You may have, you're looking for an average, right? So right. you're going to have certain items for us. Ribs and brisket are really expensive. So ribs right. might run a, a brisket might run a 40 or 45% food cost. Mm -hmm. Now, I could raise the price of brisket astronomically. To get to a 30% food cost, mm, but then right. you, you kind of got to play the average because like coleslaw or cucumber and onions is the cheapest mm -hmm. thing 
right. on our menu. Mm -hmm. And so they may run a 10% food cost or a 15% food cost. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving coleslaw away and charging a big premium for brisket, you kind of have to look at the entire picture. So okay. like, you know, we're probably the only restaurant in America that has not raised a price in two years. Agree? I was trying to remember the last price change. Long time ago. Because mm -hmm. first of all, it's just a pain in the ass to raise prices. But, but how we've done that mm -hmm. is if a certain prices go up and certain costs have went up, Right. Also, some have went down. You know, one of the one of the things that people talk about chicken wings. Yeah. You know, chicken wings. The price of chicken wings used to be fifty eight dollars. I think we may have mm -hmm. talked about this in a past episode. Fifty eight dollars. Touch right? base, maybe. And so we watched chicken wings, and so chicken wings. It used to be people had fifty cent wings, right? Yeah. So, so for forty eight, forty eight. 40, 40 pounds. So let's mm -hmm. say it was $58 divided by 40 pounds. That's a buck 45 a pound. Well, we have a buck, we have a pound and a half of wings in our portion. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So if I say times one, I only had $2 in a portion of wings plus sauces and stuff. Okay. So you got to add all that stuff mm -hmm. together. But $2. Right. Well, if I add even $3 at 33, that's $9 for an order of wings. And we charged eight ninety nine dollars for years. Well, the price of wings went up to 150 bucks a case. So now it went over $3 a pound. So we really should have been charging 18 bucks for wings. But we yeah. said, we can't do that. So we worked our price up to $14.99. Right. Right. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? Now wings are one of our most profitable items because prices don't tend to come down, mm -hmm. right? Once a price gets yeah. set in a restaurant, it doesn't tend to reduce, right? especially when all the news is, hey, prices are going up, prices are going up, prices are going up. Right. You know, so what you do is, but our brisket price went up by a buck, mm -hmm. which is $2 a pound on the plate, which is, you know, on a third pound portion is 66 cents or whatever. So it went up 66 cents at 30% food cost. That means it should have went up two bucks for a bricks of sandwich. We didn't raise it, but we made more money on the wings. So we, we dollar cost average. So we're constantly at Smokey D's. I'm constantly looking at what's expensive, what's cheap, but you also have to bring volume into it. So if I sell a hundred right. times more brisket sandwiches than I sell wings, yeah. Then I may have to adjust prices. So it's not quite as simple mm -hmm. as just setting a price. It it's yeah. really what's the price of the system. And if you're just starting out, that's the toughest part. You know? Oh yeah. But, but if you're just starting out, I think you have to look at market. And I still look at market conditions. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we're getting ready to go through this big analysis. We've been doing this analysis for a month now. And we're trying to, if I'd quit fixing food trucks and whatever, I'd finally get mm -hmm. it put to bed. But we're trying to work on moving our side dish pricing away from pints, quarts, and gallons over to by the pound. Because right. what we found is our mac and cheese and potato casserole cost has went astronomically high. And our coleslaw and cucumber and onions and other things on our menu are low. But when you order by the gallon, it costs the same. And so oh. instead of... Right, so we still yeah. we charge forty bucks a gallon. Right, well, everywhere I, everywhere I look, the the market's seventy bucks a gallon. You go to Hy-Vee, you're gonna pay seventy bucks a gallon for the same stuff, or fifty five bucks a gallon for this. And so we're way below the market. Mm -hmm. And so we need to bring that up to make it so side dishes in bulk are very profitable for us, or at right. least con contribute. Right now. There's okay. some that, you know, you're not making any money on at all, mm -hmm. but it's subsidized by other things. So, right. you know, we're going through this whole analysis trying to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we go through how much, you know, if you look at our catering and how much bulk meads we're selling, you know, mm -hmm. how do we break down so that, you know, mac and cheese is 35% of our business and potato casserole is 30% of our business and you break it down and then you look at our cost to figure out, okay, where's our target on average? Right. And then as long as our percentages don't change severely, 
like all mm-hmm. of a sudden everybody, a hundred percent of the people or 70% of the people start ordering mac and cheese, you're fine, but you constantly have to revisit that, but you right. also got to revisit the market, right? So you got to look at the huh. market because if you price yourself out of the market, then people are mm-hmm. just going to go somewhere else. Right. Right. Okay. You're thinking. You're thinking. I, I'm trying to think of, I feel like I have a question, but I'm trying to think it through to myself first before I say it and sound dumb. Just in case. But I think it makes sense in my head, so maybe I there's, there, there's There's no such thing as a dumb question, Emma. Ah, uh, I feel like that's not true. No, that's no, not that's true. That's true. Taught that a long time ago. Um, but, d- but we we kind of we kind of pride ourselves on being like cheaper than everybody else. So do you think? So do you try to stay on like the lower end of the market, or like that? That's where I get can or I'm I getting do. kind of okay. confused. Okay, so there's there, there's. Yeah, there's there's two methodologies, right? There's two. To, okay. uh, you can either yeah. be a low cost, high volume producer, mm-hmm. okay, or you can produce less at a high cost, right? Mm-hmm. So, so you can you can create scarcity, right? So, for instance, the right. chicken restaurant, and this is going way off to the side. We can say we're going to sell fried chicken, whole chicken mm-hmm. dinners. At the restaurant, but right. we're only going to serve it on one day and we're only going to do 12 of these a week, right? Because 12 is what comes in right. the case. Yeah. We've kind of talked right? about and this. So, yeah. And so you create scarcity. Even if you've only sold two, you don't tell mm-hmm. people that. You tell them you've sold eight or nine. Hey, only got three yeah. left. They don't know how many you got. You could have 50, but you create mm-hmm. that scarcity. So people are like, oh, I better jump in on this thing. Right. right? And so you try and yes. get that scarcity in. Or you just, with us, we've always been a high volume provider. So high volume takes care of a lot of mistakes. You know, you can, mm-hmm. you can do a lot of things being high volume because I don't have to be. Our food cost is probably a little higher than mm-hmm. normal barbecue restaurants maybe. But okay. we make up so much volume that contributes to paying off, you know, the the rent and the payroll mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm always trying to be, I don't necessarily need to be the lowest guy on the block, but right. I want to be something comparable. And so we, we were thinking about, we were talking through that yesterday and I'm like, okay, you go to hy I'll pick on hy and you can look at side mm-hmm. dishes and you know, they're 50, 60 bucks a gallon. Mm-hmm. Everything's made in a factory, right? Mm-hmm. You go to our kitchen, they're thirty nine ninety nine a gallon. And almost everything's made from scratch. Right. And so if you if you look at the side dish game alone, I mean, even from the restaurant business, go anywhere. What do you get? You get fries, tater tots, cottage cheese, or potato salad. That seems like your choices everywhere you go. Wow, we got mm-hmm. three times as many sides as that with three times yeah. the variety and all made from scratch. Right. We have an so, insane amount and, of sides. But but by making our sides from scratch, mm-hmm. we're able to make them cheaper than having them produced for us. Right. And they're fresher. Does it cost us a little mm-hmm. more, more in labor? Yes, it does. But mm-hmm. in the end, I think we win on that. So so we're going into this market and trying to go, okay, what are we going to increase these prices to? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think my methodology right now is I'm going to go in at a price per pound. We've always mm-hmm. sold meat by the pound, and we right. go into a pound, and and so people may end up paying seventy bucks for a gallon of mac and cheese, but when you whittle that away, that's only two dollars and thirty cents, two dollars and thirty, two dollars and fifty cents, rough aside. math. Aside, well, if you walk into the restaurant and buy a side of mac and cheese, we're at two ninety nine, and that's the cheapest. Mm-hmm. That's the cheapest side you'll find in Des Moines. Most people are three ninety nine, four dollars for a side. Right. And ours is full six ounces, and most of the time I get served four ounces. So, you know, it's that whole value proposition. People still look at mm-hmm. the dollars. We're still trying to figure out ways to keep our food costs down. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're trying to be innovative in the way we use, and so we have no waste. And you know, how do we how do we deal right. with that? And, and how do we buy meat right by the truckload and things? That's our advantages. Yeah. 
But if you're new okay. getting into it, you don't know any of this stuff, right? And you have no volume. So right. people are like, what should I charge? And I'm like, well, add up your cost. What's your time worth? And charge it, you know? And so I had a, I had a friend, he was catering up in Duluth, Minnesota. He's from Minneapolis and he's a barbecue mm -hmm. guy. And he doesn't do much catering, but I got him some barbecue rub. And he, he said, yeah, I'm charging 40 bucks a rack of ribs. I'm like, 40 bucks for a rack of ribs? Who would pay 40 bucks for a rack of ribs that cost $9? I mean, it was just astronomical. Yeah. Well, that's what the market is. And I'm like, okay, well, you have no overhead, right? Yeah. So you really have no rent, 6%. Mm -hmm. You have really no payroll, 25%. So if you're just getting started, rather than charge look up the, the restaurant and say, what are they charging? Well, you don't have the overhead of that restaurant. Mm -hmm. So if you can come in and price it accordingly without having a ton of overhead, but I mean, mm -hmm. it's like if your cost, if you think you should charge nine bucks for an item, but the normal restaurant's charging 12, then charge 10, then charge 11. Mm -hmm. Stay under the restaurant pricing because he's got all the overhead. You don't have any overhead if you're just getting started. Mm -hmm. But you still want to make a good, you don't want to undercharge. Right. Which is just as bad. You don't want to undercharge, right. but you don't want to overcharge. Because you can always kind of gradually, if it if builds, you can always gradually increase those prices some. Mm -hmm. But once once you overcharge, yeah. you try and charge me 40 bucks for a rack of ribs, I'm never even going to, I'm going to take my number out of your phone. Right? So So mm -hmm. don't. You know, don't overcharge just because that's what the market is. Cover okay. your cost, make sure you're making money, build some stuff into it. And I think when you're first starting out, it's okay to be under the market, right? And, and we've always mm -hmm. been that way. And yeah. we've stayed we've stayed under the market just because mm -hmm. of, by doing that, it's created a lot of volume for us. And by having the volume, you can stay being a lower cost provider if I didn't have a volume, we'd be dead tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? We'd have to raise our prices exponentially. Right. You know, so just, you, you got to think about that methodology. First, what's it cost you? you? Know every single element down to, hey, this rack of ribs gets, I, I know ours gets 1.3 ounces of rub per mm -hmm. rack of ribs. Okay. So you got to get down to that finite level of detail about what it costs. Forget about the smoker, forget about the labor when you're figuring food cost and try and use a 30% food cost and see where that takes you. But then take that number mm -hmm. and, and compare it to the market, figure out, look up every other place that's serving the same type of stuff. They may be significantly below, but you'll find an average. You'll find an average about where the market is if you do your research. And that's how you determine your pricing. But don't be greedy up front. Don't be greedy up front. I think if you're greedy up front, you're just asking for trouble. You're going to lose customers that are never going to look at you again because right. you're way too expensive. So right. the important part is get your food in people's mouth. You can't, you know, you can, you can, you just, you just have to do that because if you don't, you're not going to sell more. And if you keep losing bids thinking, oh, I'm charging. I mean, I see it on Facebook all the time. Oh, I yeah. just did this two meat, two side, and it was thirty two ninety five. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's twelve ninety five for me. And yeah. I have a huge restaurant to pay for, and seven, yeah. eight company vehicles, and and all this right. stuff. And I'm like, you're it's just crazy. You're not going to do that long term. Don't undercut yourself, and don't charge right. five bucks a person. But find just, yeah. find your food costs, find the mar market. Find what's right for you. Find what's right for you. Figure out what you want to be. If you want to just cater just mm -hmm. a little bit out of necessity, you can be high margin because you're only going to do a little bit. If you set your prices too low, you're going to be overloaded. Right. But remember, if you if you don't have any overhead and you're comparing your price to somebody that has all the overhead, you can be a lot cheaper than them and make the same amount of money. Okay. That answered what question was brewing in my head. So good job. Clear clear as mud. Now it is, yeah. That all made sense. 
I mean, the math, the math is tough. To the me. math is not tough. But I'm just, just bad at math. I almost failed out like three just, or four you times. You just have to list out every single ingredient. Now, a lot of people like to bring containers, you know, like mm -hmm. a to-go container. If I serve a brisket sandwich in a to-go container, they like to bring that into their food cost. I'm not a fan of that. I like to leave mm -hmm. that separately. I like to leave paperware and whatever. I like Why to leave that? that as a separate. I, I just, I like to measure that separately as food cost. So you can bring it in, but to me, it's not a food item. Okay. okay. So every business, you got food cost, you got paper cost, you got payroll cost, whatever. It's just, if you break it out separately. Okay. I mean, but you also, you have to sometimes if you have a really high maintenance item that takes a mm -hmm. lot, a lot of work to make, then you, you kind of got to bring that in. You don't want to be at the, high food cost level plus have huge high labor. I mean, I've got the same problem right now with our marinated vegetable salad. It's our I highest thought, cost side item. I thought okay. we fixed that. No. Oh. No. And so the problem oh, is no, broccoli is better. so expensive. And so it True. there's there's broccoli, onions, cucumbers, tomatoes, balsamic vinaigrette and whatever. And mm -hmm. so we're fixing a little bit of the the ingredient stuff. But broccoli is still super expensive. Well, you know, and it's a lot of labor. You know, you got to buy heads yeah. of broccoli and cut down the stems. And I mean, it's just a, I go into the kitchen. I think we have a full-time person cutting broccoli all day long, it seems like. But mm -hmm. that contributes. Plus, it's also a high cost item. So it's like, okay, I really should be shit canned in this one. But there'll be a revolt if I do. So I can't do that. So I got to figure out yeah. how to, you know, do you reduce the portion size? Not a fan of that. Do you, you know, what do you do to get, drive some cost out of that recipe? Mm -hmm. It'll make me more affordable or instead of never, ever, I'm a never, ever put that on social media as far as uh, marinated veg, never advertise that. Okay. Advertise coleslaw, advertise cucumber and onions. Oh, Super I was going to say, I think I yeah. post, I think my picture of the turkey club has marinated veggie, but it doesn't. It has coleslaw and cucumber. It's very, so. it's very colorful and it's very fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you don't, it you don't doesn't want, photograph. You, you don't, very you don't well. want to. You don't want to tell people about that one. It doesn't photograph very well because of the balsamic glaze. Balsamic, yeah, it doesn't look good. Vinegar. Much. It just yeah. looks yeah dingy. So anyway, but, I mean that that's that's kind of my lesson for today is. I actually food, learned quite a bit from it. So food, 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 cost it out. See what compare it to your market. See where you want to be. Yeah, and then go from there. But you know, you you can price yourself way high. Mm -hmm. If you don't sell anything, what's that get you? Nothing. Nothing. But don't be low. Don't Make sure you're charging. Don't give friends a whorehouse deal. Mm -hmm. You know, just don't. Can you say that? Uh, it's your podcast. You can say whatever you want. Oh yeah, we're set as explicit. So yeah, you know, it, it's okay to give people, but charge people. Don't just give it away. Mm -hmm. You've got time involved. You got labor involved, and whatever. But just try and serve the best food you possibly can serve, and you know, do your research and find out, understand your cost going in of what you have. A lot of people have don't have any clue, but find out your cost. Look at that ingredient. Put out how much each. Add up on a simple spreadsheet. Here's my food cost. And then give 30% a wheel, right? And then you can achieve, figure out it may be 25 or 35 where you end up, but 30% is mm -hmm. a good starting point. Take your cost divided by 0.3, boom, off you go. Boom. Boom. Yeah. It's interesting to know that now because I'm always like kind of involved in that part with like the OC and the Crafty Mac, but I I never know what's actually being said. So now I might be able to at least understand yeah, what's going on. Yeah, yeah, speaking of it, it kind of to end, you know, mm -hmm. I, did you see Chick-fil-A's new uh, thing? No. Yeah, Chick-fil-A is coming out with a pimento cheese chicken sandwich. They want to be us. What can I say? They want to be us, the bastards. They want to be us. We've been doing that for over two, a year now. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say two years now, probably. Ah, uh, yeah, almost. Almost two That's years. Probably, yeah, it's probably coming up. Pimento That's, cheese on a chicken sandwich, and they're I finally don't think just we figuring have, it out. I don't think we have a pimento cheese sandwich now. We just sell pimento cheese as a side. Oh, yeah. I think we took a, the sandwich off for the time being. 
Well, I mean, I know there's some other stuff. I mean, they had to do something because their Sunday sales were really hurting. Mm hmm. Well, that was a good one. (laughs) Took me a minute. They're not open on Sunday, even though even though a guy told me once he said I'm going to open up a food truck, put it in the Chick Fil A parking lot on Sunday, and called it Side Chick. Now that'd be funny. He'd probably get in some Serious situations, issues. but yeah, it'd be funny. It's fine. it's fine. You know what should have gotten us in some serious situations? That post what? you made this last weekend. What's the greatest Gold post Bond? ever? It was not. It was not. If you're I listening, my... go back out. Go, go back to the smoke, so, Smokey D's some... social medias, and I show I Gold Bond is the non-official sponsor of uh, the Smokey D's barbecue team this weekend. Um, I was and to, to give it flair. I held it and I dropped my drawers and had my shoes down there and <laughs> and took a picture and sent to Emma and she goes, "Hey, post this, share this," and she goes. No. no, and I'm like, yeah, share it. What'd it get? Hey, lots it of likes, well. lots of shares. It did. It's I well. didn't get any shares. It got a lot of comments, lots and of none comments. were like negative. Everyone thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, which I was kind of surprised by. I was ready for some backlash, but it's good. Um, you're you're always ready for backlash. Yeah, I am. Uh yeah. There was a weird text to get on a Saturday morning. I was just minding my business. Walking around the farmer's market and get a text like that. And then I went and looked at the post. He's like, share my post. And I went and looked at it. And I was like, oh, my God. What the hell? Like, traumatized on the spot. I was like, I don't really want to share this. But I did. It was just the worst. But I'll see you. I'll see what we're else. Authentic. We can come up with. We're authentic. Uh, we're not. Okay. Or not. Yeah. Okay, enough for now. We're rambling. It's time to go, and I've got stuff to do. Yeah, that's fair. So, right. so in the meantime. Yeah, like, subscribe, follow us um, on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, YouTube. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you get notified every Monday when we post episodes. Uh, also... Will that, no- will that notify them like midnight or 1 a.m. when you do it? No, I, I post at 5, but I think it... I think it generates it'll just notify them throughout like at a time Uh-oh. in the day Uh-oh. um didn't want uh, to be waking people up and being all no. pissed off at us if no 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 um yeah youtube videos don't go out till 5 a.m um and then if you have episode suggestions we have a forum uh that you can find in our instagram bio uh, in our link tree, there's a little button that says episode suggestions. Fill that out. Send them to us. We're starting to get some. Yeah. Uh, we that, need some uh, more. Yeah, we need some more. They're looking promising. But uh, it gives me something to look for, which is fun. I love that. So, um, yeah, do those. And I think that's all. Okay. That's I have, it. Yeah. That's it for now. Until I'm next week. The, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm off to the land of Wisconsin. So we're going to have to figure our next week out or come up with a guest. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to be remote all next week. So and remote with a lot of bad internet. So we're just going to have to figure this out. I'm going to throw the mic in the bag and just be on a moment's notice about what we're going to talk about. I love that he tells me that two days before he leaves. It's so fun. It's all right. We'll get it figured out. Okay. I'll yeah. approve your Friday off, okay? <laughs> Thanks. I pr- I'm approving your. I'm approving you can have tomorrow off. So get your ass to work and get this thing out of it so it's ready for Monday. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Okay. We're out. We're out. See ya.